Hey Nintendo, if I don't show any new Pokemon or their names, can I at least talk about the stats? You can take down the video, just don't give me a strike. We cool? Okay, we cool. So yeah, it's taken a lot of fun out of the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet leaks, which have been absolutely insane. I want to cover everything. These games look amazing. But because of the takedowns, no strikes, which is at least a really good thing. Um, yeah, I don't get to have that non-stop coverage anymore, but I still really want to talk about all the insanity that's coming out between the moves, the move sets, the new abilities, the new moves, the stats, the typings, all of this crazy stuff. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, share it with all your friends, and comment your thoughts down below. It's also really unfortunate, because now I really, really can't wait to play the games, but it looks like I'm not going to be getting an early copy, because no one out in Seattle is breaking street date. Wink, wink. So, let's start off with the evolution of Spiritito. Now, this is how I'm going to refer to the Pokemon. Loose descriptions and rough Pokedex placements, and hopefully Nintendo is cool with that. So, I've already talked about the stats of the starter evolutions, but that video is gone now. Um, it's just absolutely insane. 123 speed Protean Pokemon with 110 attack. It hits harder than Greninja, and it's faster than Greninja. I haven't gone through all of the movesets, and I don't feel comfortable showing the movesets directly when it comes to this. So, yeah, I don't know. I actually, I'm going to review it, and then I'm going to report back to you guys with my findings. Yeah, its coverage is fine. It's not as nutty as Greninja, but it's still going to be good. Now, there is a nerf to Protean. It only activates once per switch, so you don't just get to fly around with every typing nonstop and pull, like, stab shenanigans all the time, but it's still going to be a pretty competent Pokemon. After that, we have Fue Coco's evolution, which gets unaware as a hidden ability, and it also has some super buff tank stats. Uh, the ghost typing makes it weird because it does have curse in its moveset, but you can just tear the ghost away into a great defensive typing. And I have a Pokemon that's as tanky as a Hippowdon with unaware, but less special defense setup options. So if you can really make it work, it has like a lot of crazy stuff in its kit. Uh, that That's where things get a little spicy for this Pokemon. Next up, we have the evolution for Quaxly, and it all comes down to Moxie plus its signature move. So there's like moves and stuff to talk about, there's abilities and stuff to talk about. Kind of want to break it up into different videos like the stats, the moves, and the abilities. But there are, is going to be some overlap between them because a lot of Pokemon are very core with that. 85 speed, mediocre, gets outsped by everything, just dunked on because 85, 80, 75. You hit it with a good stab move or like dual Terra, like you go like electric plus Terra electric. Yeah, not even that, a neutral hit. So you hit it with dragon terra or something off of a strong physical hit and this thing just folds so what you need to do is get that speed in there uh scarf moxie is a thing but its signature move boosts speed on use similar to flame charge so if you get one ko with the speed boost now you just take off and you are looking for that six zero sweep now we get into insanity like 110 hit points 100 attack on just a pokemon that's in the early part of the decks so this could be Lechonk's evolution, and it has different stats based on male and female. Actually, how does this compare to other gender difference Pokemon? Okay, good. I was going to be mad offended if Nidoqueen and Nidoking had lower base stats than the pig evolution, but it's not the case. However, better stat distribution. But it's not worth the work to put into the Pokemon. So here's the meme. Dunsparce evolution. What is my purpose? to make Dunsparce an Eviolite monster. So if we kind of just look at the stats, like, oh, it doesn't become some kind of speedy sweeper or get the ability to set up a lot harder and then go into, like, crazy Serene Grace lockouts. You don't get that. You don't get much more tankiness. You just get some offensive stats. But Dunsparce gets Coil, and you want to be coiling on the evolution anyways, so Eviolite Coil just going to be better, and... We're going to see if the boy is strong, could get some setup, could like be a very worthy baton pass Pokemon. Like if this thing gets some Swords Dance speed boost or a shift gear from a Cyclozard Shed Tail, now we are in devastation territory where you can just kind of wreck people on Rock Slide and they don't get to play the game because of Serene Grace. That's going to be fun. Um, we have some other Pokemon coming in. So these are the spider bug Pokemon. Pre-evolution, not usable. This? Why Why are, like, stakeout Pokemon cursed? In a modern Pokedex, in a modern generation, for some reason these Pokemon are still being designed. Now, maybe there's a super mega giga uber busted signature move that it has, but not really holding my breath. After that, we get into the Dung Beetle Pokemon. 
So, Synchronize, I eat Telepathy, I eat doesn't really have singles usage, 45, bad, but then interesting stuff. 75, 100, you're going to tank a special hit, and then if you get some kind of setup, you have some cool things going on. Again, comes down to sig signature moves. So going back to how this video works, it effectively just kind of has like pre-setup for the moveset guides, and for some reason people are asking me if I'm going to do movesets in the new Pokemon. Of course I am, what kind of question is that? Also with lower speed Pokemon, especially in doubles, there's going to be a lot of trick room opportunities. So with like all the new mechanics and all the mo new moves and stuff, like you still have to consider base Pokemon. Uh, and Pokemon Sword and Shield trick room always kept viability. That's because of a lot of stupid stuff where it's like, oh yeah, you set up Psychic Terrain and then Ndidi and there's really no counterplay whatsoever and you just get a free trick room. That was kind of silly. So we're going to see how that viability holds up. Um, now we get into Grievard and its evolution. So Signature Move does more damage based on how many Pokemon have fainted on your team. You come in, is there like hope for some kind of Giga shenanigans here? So you have Natural Bulk and the Fluffy ability. So halves damage for moves that make contact. Almost all of them are going to be physical moves, but still every once in a while you get one of those uh, special moves that makes contact in a weird way. So you can like tank a hit do some good damage, and if the damage on the signature move scales pretty crazy, that's a thing. Sand Rush, we saw that have viability with Stoutland. That was also like last resort shenanigans into Sand Rush, and that was nasty. So not quite the same thing. People want to see Ghost Fire. Honestly, that would make the Pokemon awful, because you just get more weaknesses, and Fire Stab doesn't really do much for the Pokemon. So with this... Find something with the speed, or maybe you just need to close out the game. So this Pokemon comes in, is a three-hit KO, but there's only two opponents or two Pokemon left on the opponent's team. So you take a hit, KO, take a hit, KO, GG easy. Get that sweep. Uh, next up, pure psychic Pokemon. So this is going to be the ostrich looking Pokemon. 105 speed. Speed tiers are weird now, because like everything runs choice scarf to like get into that giga sweeping. Like there's there's moments where you see Greninja running Choice Scarf, or 110, 115 speed Pokemon running Choice Scarf. Everything is like fishing for a speed boost. Things are awkward. 101 is a workable special attack. So, yeah. Oh, wait, this thing actually has speed boost. Never mind. Um, just kind of working however I see it, and then reacting. So, Baton Pass Pokemon, potentially, like every speed boost. Opportunist. Oh yeah, this thing has that's like a giga busted ability. We're gonna skip ahead and see the ability real quick. Right. That's the one that steals the opponent's stat boosts. Oh. And then we have speed boost. Oh. Oh, they were man, Game Freak really just put it all on the table. They said, we're gonna make this thing the most frail Pokemon ever, give it kind of middling stats, but it might actually just be Giga Mega Busted, and it's like a good... It's not like a tank Pokemon that comes in and tries to reverse some of the status that you have on your team or something, like an unaware Pokemon or Mirror Armor on the Corviknight. This is just if if you can bring it in. Also, like, predicting a switch with this thing could be absolutely devastating. Or maybe you just run Speed Boost. Like, I think it's actually going to come down to skill ceiling and just the balance of where the Pokemon can go. This is free power, this is earned power that isn't guaranteed, but a lot stronger, but, you know, just a more flat power curve, however still pretty strong. That's gonna be a thing. Normal Psychic Pokemon, oh, that's uh, Ferrigarath. Kudchu, so it gets to eat a berry again. We also have Armored Tail and Sap Sipper. So just some stuff going in. The stats, it's a, it can tank a hit, and then it can deal out a good hit and then not really too much going on. It really just makes me wonder like how much you get out of the Kudchu, or it turns into a Greedent situation again. Workable stats, but takes a lot of investment, takes a lot of berry play, doesn't really come out. 520 base stats, good though. So then we have Wiglet and its evolution, as well as just Diglett and Dugtrio. So like here's your comparison on the stats in the Pokemon. They're the same Pokemon, it's, it's just Water Dugtrio. And that just sounds worse in every way, because ground earthquake slaps. Water doesn't have as much slappage as a ground Pokemon. I haven't looked at the movesets, so I mean like, do you still have Fissure or something? Do you still have Sucker Punch? Do you still have some kind of cheese? They just made it the same Pokemon, and that, that sounds tragic. But that, I think that means good things for the uh, Tentacruel Arfake, because Tentacruel 
actually niche viable. So after that, we have the big sushi Pokemon that eats the smaller sushi Pokemon, and then Insanity kind of breaks down from there. Its ability, its interactions are crazy. I want to talk about them, but again, I don't know how close that gets to, like, going too deep into the data mine, but if the Nintendo rep is still watching at this point, and they haven't taken the video down by now, I don't know. All you need to know is that, yes, in doubles, it's really good. 150 hit points, really good. 115 defense, 100 hit points, 65 is whatever, and then this is what I'm talking about. Like, if you just cut a Pokemon speed to nothing and pump its stats where it matters, also, like, okay, special attack doesn't matter, this thing is going to be strong. Has the unaware as well, has the oblivious for that potential shenanigan inside of doubles, and then its stats, it boosts, like, mad when you actually do the combo, so it's about to be crazy. After that, we have the Hakefish, so it becomes Psychic as well. Mold Breaker needed Sharpness, a new ability that boosts cut attacks. So a lot of Pokemon are getting this, like Gallade, just kind of getting reworked into Sharpness for that extra bit of damage, which is pretty cool. And I don't know if it has like agility and then can hurt and then kind of like wants to do a thing. Like Mold Breaker seems important for a lot of ability interactions and some other Pokemon. Uh, let me check its signature move. Okay, forget agility and think better Shell Smash. This Pokemon is actually going to be devastating. And then we have the infamous Dolphin Pokemon. So this has been memed on. A lot of people are just going, wait, what? So ability shenanigans, it leaves, it comes back, and then it's outrageous. Uh, actually not like the craziest we've seen, because like Wishy Washy didn't really get that much of a pickup, even though its schooling form is very powerful stats, and 650 looks like a lot, but some of that's wasted in 106. Like, I'm not a big fan of Pokemon that go mixed attackers. I think that's severely overrated and ends up sapping too much power where it's needed. 160 pushes to the edge of like one shots, whereas if you're in a 130 attack range, no matter what you do, you slap on a life orb, everything's two hit KOing kind of thing and comes down to base powers and moves. So its ability is this, so it doesn't get any stats or any extra like buffing elsewhere. 197, 87 though, it just survives. 100 speed, kind of bad, unless you just like scarf, uh, flip turn, and then come in and just like dedicate to wrecking the opponent on a 160. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. And then we have small lives evolution, which is kind of crazy because mid-dex Pokemon that feels like it should be an early-dex Pokemon, especially with how early it was revealed, over 500 BST. And it makes good use of that. 78 hit points kind of low, but the way that EV scaling and stuff works, where, like, you just pump that, pump all your EVs in there, good to go, and then you can kind of figure out what to do. Both these abilities, great. Harvest shenanigans. Actually, Trevenant got to take off just a little bit, so we're going to see how much of a power crep Trevenant this is. 85, 76, 82, going into about the same, higher, much higher. So we have tankier Trevenant with Harvest, or you could go for placing Terrain. Terrain isn't free anymore, and it's going to be a lot less common without Dynamax. So we're going to see how that plays out. Uh, Pokemon seems viable, and then probably has like a Giga Busted signature move or something. Um, after that, we have a, oh no... Stupid Pepper Pokemon has Moody. I mean, it looks Moody, but still. Uh, 486. Offensively based, though. So, there's like this weird trend with certain Grass-type Pokemon that if you look at Victory Bell, Victory Bell is surprising with its offenses because it has... It's, it's mixed. You can either just go all-in on attack, all-in on special attack, and still feel good, really good about it. I'm pretty sure its signature move is also broken. So, it's kind of like... We have mid-ish stats that play into a Pokemon signature move, and if it gets to do its thing, it actually becomes pretty scary. But then you can just kind of take an old-school traditional Pokemon and wall it out, and just kind of set up into it. So, the dynamic between new and old Pokemon might get really neat for competitive. Uh, Chlorophyll into 75, playable. Insomnia, you don't need it because Grass ignores Spore. Moody gets pretty spooky. Ew, we have Bellibolt. So, Electromorphosis on 103 Special Attack. It it looks like it, it would have a decent amount of hit points. Should be higher hit points. Decent enough defenses. What do you do? Max hit points, max special attack, and then you just try to tap things harder than it taps you. 
and try to get get back something. I feel like in Dynamax this would probably be super scary because after that Vaporeon rolled me over and then I just kind of stole that and used it on the most godly lantern ever. Like you could do some really fun stuff with bulky Pokemon near like once that tech got discovered, game game just went out the window. But until then it's like, eh, is that is there like some kind of thing to fish for inside of this when it comes to generation nine or is there just kind of no point here? I don't know. Uh the engine Pokemon, which has been shown, kind of... Nope, its signature move is kind of weird, so I'm guessing it's just going to be a Shift Gear Pokemon. And I haven't thought about Kling Clang in a while, so probably just better that, and has poison coverage, and just gets blown out by ground-type moves if, it, if that Pokemon survives. So that's a thing. Uh, the Worm Pokemon, Pure Steel, Earth Eater. Uh, that has, I think that's actually like water absorbed for ground type Pokemon. So that's scary. That's scary. Oh man, you know, I think like the biggest thing I have to do is I have to refigure out like what the top damn, like the top tanks are. I don't know what 7145 looks like. Is this actually a really good, just dedicated defensive tank or is it just kind of mediocre kind of idea? Because I have been surprised, like when I'm comparing things to, um, Corviknight when I'm comparing things to Hippowdon, and if you just go full defensive investments, like, oh, wow, this thing just survives everything, but doesn't look like it would. This, that just seems like it's going to be pretty strong, and then just a ground absorption monster that also gains other immunities and giga crazy nonsense resistances off that steel typing. So we have the mouse Pokemon, and 111 speed, actually good, gets technician, gets friend guard, Gets cheek pouch. That's that's some spicy stuff. Like I don't care about this if you just have a technical Pokemon running 111, and its new move is one of the wildest things ever. So it's, it's one of those things which like, please keep watching this video. Don't click off because I don't have enough information. Retention and watch time is everything. Also subscribe and notification bell so that way you watch my other videos and then we get full information. But they have a signature move that can hit up to 10 times, so Loaded Dice was made for this Pokemon. And then it's like 15 power, but you can Technician it, but you can also Normal Terrastalize it. Uh, I don't think 75 attack is too little at that point. Jolly Nature, Wreck. Or God, do you put a King's Rock on it and you just become like the ugliest, filthiest, RNG-iest, Luxackiest, I hit you six times with this and now you flinch kind of Pokemon. That's, that's, that's wrong. No, that, that can't be right. All right, now we get to see if Satitan is a Titan 521 on the base stat total. That is a deep red 170. Okay, again, now all of my, uh, everything I know up to this point goes out the window. Off the top of my head, I think Drifloom, 150, 44, 54. And again, this is where, like, the math is wild. Drifblim is such a stupidly tanky Pokemon. Also, it's in the game. So I'm thinking Drifblim, Stockpile, Minimize, Baton Pass. It's going to have to come in and do some work. Especially no Dynamax means evasion is back, boys. Unless they, like, gutted that moveset and I haven't seen it on the, uh, the data mine yet. In which case, tell me, but don't tell me. You know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, if you give me the truth, I will cry. Um, so, so Titan just seems bulkier. Then a Drift Blim. You can't do that. That doesn't seem right. Thick Fat to get rid of some Ice Weaknesses. Or the Slush Rush. Now, maintaining just like permanent speed boost means that Unburden on Drift Blim is just better. But it also has 113 attack. So, I mean, it Slush Rushes. It doesn't die. And then it hits all right. 113 doesn't smack, but this Pokemon might be two-hit KOing with Speed Prio while being a three-hit KO itself. That's, uh, that's pretty good. Alright, so how terrible is the pseudo-legendary Pokemon going to be? 600 base stat total, 87, 145, 115. Um, comes down to Dragon Dance. Yep, it gets that, and it's just going to kind of come down to how much better than Dragonite it is. So I don't think this attack makes any difference, and it's really that multi-scale on the Dragonite that's devastating. So... If these Pokemon hit the field at the same time, it's like Dragon Dance, Dragon Dance, Outspeed, but into Multiscale means Dragon Dance sur or Dragonite survives and then gets the Revenge hit and then KOs the uh, Pseudo Legendary from Gen 9 
that makes things interesting. Any Dragon Dance Pokemon, like Gyarados even, is a lot happier because Scald has effectively been removed, is what it seems like from Datamine. So no stray burns just going to take you out. Um, we're gonna see how, how that happens. Also, a lot of tank Pokemon kind of nerfed in their own ways. Huh, little sushi Pokemon is actually, like, strong on its own, and then combos into that thing we were talking about earlier, and the game gets wild. So, after that, we have Cyclozar, 121 speed! They did it! They went 121 speed, shift gear, and then has regenerate... No. No. You, you can't get rid of half your life, give your allied Pokemon a substitute, and then get Regenerator for free. No. That's just illegal. And the power creep of, like, the insulting 501, because we have to make it edge out something like a Doug Trio or just the 120 Pokemon. Oh. Oh, that is... That makes me sick. That makes me sick, dude. So then we have Palmy's Evolution. It's just an offensive... Pokemon, that's it. If it doesn't get out, like if it get, if it doesn't outspeed, it's in trouble, and then it hits all right. Iron Fist 115. Infernape, where are you at? Hits harder than Infernape, slightly slower. GG easy. Uh, Seagull Pokemon. Wind Power has like a new class of moves, so Cut moves have interactions, and Wind moves are now a thing. So this powers up when you get hit by a Wind move. 125 speed is outrageous. 105. So this is just like fast Pelipper. I guess. After that, we have the crazy Stork Pokemon. So, 485, distributed horribly, but has an interesting thing where this powers up Rock-type moves. So we have Flying Dark Rock Triple Stab into a potential fourth Terra Stab, and I guess it probably has like a ridiculous signature move. It appears not. Um, after that, we have the Parakeet Pokemon that has been officially shown, but not officially revealed. Eh, it looks whatever i don't think there's enough here but who i don't know that's not that's not worth my time with all the time we've spent on this video and all the things that we're getting into flamingo pokemon 500 it's got some stuff but a broken ability cloth anger shell so i think when it drops below half it gets a mini shell smash regenerator that's also pretty good stats fine um, this is where things get nuts, so we have Purifying Salt on a tanky tank tank Pokemon that tanks like a tank, and hits decently hard. Sturdy Clear Body, also pretty good. This, less damage from Ghost types, cuz, and also has like tank set up, and I think it's, um, Recover as well. Somehow, Game Freak managed to Power Creep Toxapex. You don't get status, and you also take less damage from Ghost. Wow. Uh, Corrosion! Haven't seen that in a while. So this is that weird flower Pokemon that was from the leaks. Uh, 525. Weird stat distribution. So it just, like, does a thing. Can lay spikes. Can burn through poison and steel type Pokemon. And it, it trucks. It, it can slap. Probably has a crazy move, I don't know. We, we not there yet. Um, after that, we have Grafi Eye. So, Grafi Eye Prankster on a 110. I don't care about Unburden. I don't care about Poison Touch. I care that its signature move is Sketch for Abilities and also hands the opponent's ability to your ally. This is going to be a nightmare to deal with in doubles, but at least it opens up, like, the competitive strategy potential. Um, after that, we have Fido and its evolution. This is a really good ability. Aroma Veil, also pretty solid. And low? Oh man, how does this compare to all creamy? 65, 75, 121, 57, 115, 80. So instead of being like specially defensive, it's physically defensive, still kind of low, might have like some good setup stuff going on. Actually, no, the Pokemon looks like hot garbage. I tried to make all creamy work because it has a lot of really good utility. You can call mine Iron Defense, Draining Kiss, Recover, and that just eventually gets crazy. Now, unfortunately, Dynamax is a little too powerful for that. Also has, like, a lot of setup stuff, but I think, like, all creamy has potential, and this Pokemon does not. Uh, now we get into shenanigans with the Dark Dog. Eh, it doesn't really look that good. It's meant to be like an anti-intimidate Pokemon, but 
whatever. Wind Rider, another air interaction, and this is going to be the Bramble Pokemon. Interesting. 480. So I guess you want to just kind of get some speed in there, like take a hit, get some speed, and do spooky ghost stuff. Infiltrator, also pretty nice, but stat distribution, kind of awful. Um, after that, we have Gimme Ghoul and its evolution. So fortunately, actually, wow. So chest form Gimme Ghoul, not good. Even the evolution, uh, not good. This is busted, though. But I guess you take a hit and then you just try to, like, hurt things. Like, you just have stats. It's just a stat stick, and I hope it doesn't really take off. Now we get into Paradox Pokemon, so it's like a mega form of the other Pokemon, but doesn't have like as busted of a moveset, it seems. So we have Protosynthesis, does nothing unless Sunlight comes into play, but then you just get like your best stat boosted, so it could be better Chlorophyll or has like some kind of Sunny Day interactions. And then we also have Electric Terrain boosting on the Quark Drive. Doubles is nuts, the stats are nuts. Some, like, but these Pokemon have, like, some kind of failing that ends up letting them down in some kind of way. Uh, haven't looked into the moveset, so it's mostly make or break on that. But, I mean, like, Regenerator, just too good on Amoongus. And then also the other things that Amoongus gets, just too good. Uh, Paradox Magneton, also kind of awkward and kind of weird. But at least we have these stat comparisons right here. So, yeah, like, the 130 special attack on Magnezone also has, like, all of the shenanigans that Magnezone does. So, ends up working pretty well, but 101, 121, don't sleep on it. Electric Ground, kind of crazy on special coverage. So, we're going to see how the Pokemon ends up taking off. Uh, I can't be bothered to go into Pokemon Showdown to see if this Timid has higher stats than this. It probably does, because it's only a 10% boost. So, I guess that's where you go, like, specific EV spread, kind of like on weird Ultra Beast, where it's like, okay, make this the highest stat, make this one point less, put the rest in the hit points, now you survive. 85, 97, 85, you're like two hit, three hit KO potential. So you can maybe snowball, take off, and then you go for a sunny day team, and actually pretty good looking. Now the Jigglypuff terrifies me. 111 speed, you get to outspeed almost anything and set up. It has amnesia, it has calm mind, it has bulk up? Bulk up amnesia, chesto resto into terra move, terra type shenanigans. I don't know, this thing actually might be like the devastating replacement for a Clefable. Keep an eye on the spookiness. 135, 135. Game Freak actually let a, a Pokemon in with these stats that can hold an item. I have no idea where we're going from here. Both of the new Volcaronas are awkward, so no insight just yet. Again, that's going to come down to moveset guide and when people actually go to playing with this Pokemon. Does not Mega Mega Salamence with Dragon Dance work, probably. That's a lot of speed and that's a lot of scary stuff to be packing into that Pokemon. Um, other Don fan, I don't know, like, I'm tired. I don't have time for this. Doesn't get Quiver Dance on the future Volcarona. Hariyama stats are kind of nasty. Hydreigon doesn't get nasty plots, so people are kind of looking down on it. Tyranitar is just also really good with Sandstream. Delibird stats are just outrageous for no reason, but also a reason because that's where we're at. Future Gallade, 116 speed, 130 attack, kind of mixed, kind of frail. It's a thing, and these legendaries are also pretty wild and crazy. The Poppy Hammer Pokemon has some stuff going on. 94 speed with Scarf is workable. Haven't looked into its crazy 160 base power stab move on the 75. I wonder if you actually just go Terra into this with Scarf, outspeed everything, tank a hit, and then just... Well, actually, no. Ooh. Oh, the ability... Not the ability. The move means you can't use it consecutively, so it actually gets rid of the Scarf. I don't know where this Pokemon goes. You Baton Pass Cyclozar into it with speed boost, and then you win. I honestly thought Armor Rouge and Cerule Edge were going to be way more busted. Like, 121 base speed for no reason. It looks like they have, at least with Cerule Edge. And then shenanigans. So weak armor actually kind of puts the Pokemon there. It takes the right hit. Seems underwhelming, but also signature move. Pretty crazy. So fake Tentacruel is interesting. Tentacruel always had workable stats and sometimes like was a dedicated special defense tank. That could just ruin your day. 100 speed, workable. The ability makes to where it has less priority, but its status moves don't get stopped by abilities. Uh, 
We'll see. We'll see. After that, we have Bisharp and its evolution. So not outrageously nasty, but still pretty strong looking. However, Eviolite Bisharp now enters the game. Here we go. Quagsire still keeps the unaware, and that's going to be busted. That's going to be outrageously busted. All right, we're deep enough into the video, and I've got a couple to use. Holy fuck. Stockpile, recover, body press. Ooh, I just found my new favorite Pokemon to use. Uh, we have dead Primeape. It's got stuff. It's probably cool. And then off screen, we got Tauros, which is going to be usable. I am tired. 